have here the list of uh, people that are going to want to sign up. I only have, <coughs> excuse me, I only have 13 people here. Um, if when we go through this list, if there's someone else that wants to um, speak, I will recognize them. We will be giving four minutes for each person to speak. Uh, John Breeding will be doing the timing. He will give you a three minute uh, warning and then time at four. So he'll say wrap up at three minutes and please wrap it up at three minutes. And like I said, if we have more time, we will go back if anyone um, wants, that's, I haven't called once to speak. It's right here with me. There's also one out there. There was still a clipboard out there with a pen. So I'll start the first. Who picked the clipboard up? Where's the clipboard? It was out there. Hold on, would you please find it, John? While we're waiting, I want to remind you, if the person in front of you has already spoken what you would like to speak, um, we do have the time. I just don't want you to take four minutes to say the same thing that the person in front of you already said. Um, I don't mind you coming up and agreeing with them and adding to it. First person on the sign-in form, uh, Mark Richards, when you come up also, please state your name and where you live. Thank you. My name is Mark Richards. I live at 1002 North Main Street in Mount Airy. I'll stick to uh, my area of expertise. I retired with 39 years on the job uh, in a fire department that uh, borders Carroll County. Um, I have I have concerns. Hold on, with, please. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought I turned it off. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, did have a conversation with the uh, with the developers back here, and I understand a little bit more. However, um, I still am concerned about the street layout, the street widths, um, especially the call to Zach. Uh, it's a huge effort to get fire apparatus into strategic positions on dead end streets. Um, they arrive when they want to arrive or you know, the, the, the travel time dictates when they get there. Um, I'm certainly not saying anything derogatory about the Mount Airy Fire Department. However, I do know from listening to the fire department scanner uh, that their apparatus routinely um, goes out understaffed. The only piece of equipment in that firehouse that is staffed 24-7 is the ambulance. When that ambulance is gone, they're gone for an hour and a half. When they transport a patient to the hospital, they're gone for a minimum of an hour and a half. More with COVID because they have to um, procure rooms. The hospital has to have rooms available uh, that are uh, for COVID patients. Um, townhomes in that configuration um, are subject to significant um, threats of fires, especially with uh, wood decks or decks made of flammable materials. Um, in the summertime, you got 
grills out there in the wintertime. There's chimeneas. Um, once a fire starts in a configuration such as is being proposed, once it gets up to where the house is, typically the siding on the house is not fire resistant or fireproof in any way. What happens is it walks the dog up into the soffit and through <coughs> the attics. Um, once again, Mount Airy is, you know, that's the first in fire department. However, it takes approximately 10 minutes for Lisbon, Damascus, uh, New Market, and other surrounding jurisdictions or other surrounding fire departments who come in on, on large structure fires. Uh, it takes a long time for the backup to, to arrive or the, the, the cavalry to arrive. It's three minutes. Um, just like to close with uh, once all these proposals are, are heard um, from a conservative estimate, if all this is approved, um, the east and west Beck Drive, um, there's going to be over 2,500 additional vehicles on the roads in Mount Airy. We're not talking about Beck Drive. Thank you. Debbie? Okay. I just want to make sure. Barbara Gardner? Barbara Gardner, 6624 Windridge Road. We are not in the town, but we are still on well water. So anything that you put on that property that could contaminate the, the groundwater will possibly affect us. We're also looking at light pollution. Um, our town, our community has no commercial development in there. There's no commercial development until you hit Main Street in town and then uh, Taylorsville. So to put something commercial in there does not, is not part of our, our area. Um, if you have drive-in, the traffic, that's a small road there. It's the intersection there is busy in the morning to begin with, plus you have all the school children. Um, I just look at, I hope you consider the quality of life that you're gonna be putting out to all of us in that area. Um, I know you have to develop it, but I just want you to be conscious of the other people there. Thank you. Suzanne, and I'm sorry, I can't read the last name. Suzanne Bricker. Can you please spell your last name? B-R-I-C-K-E-R. Bricker. Thank you. 406 North Main Street. And I want to pick up on the 2,500 more cars in the area. Um, and also uh, about the small roads. Um, we can't just only be thinking about these cars. We need to, that, that will come with this development, but the east and west property that's being developed too. I think what we need to do is draw a circle around our town and with common sense, think about our quality of life and what will happen when we have those additional cars in, in this area. Um, we already have seen with the development a little bit of uptick and I'm not um, looking forward to any additional traffic here. We also have problems getting um, stop signs and so forth. So just like to pick up on that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Rita, Misra. I'm going to pick up where Suzanne left off. My name is Rita Misra at 707 North Main Street, Mount Airy. And I feel like I'm getting old with these um, types of projects. I wanted to emphasize that North, uh, to everybody here, in case they forgot, that North Main Street is a residential area, and it's a community of its own, even if we don't have an HOA. Um, we also house, or we support, the only emergency services in the town, and public schools. And I'm going to emphasize the public schools uh, here. So when this development was first proposed in the 90s, 
People came out and they weighed in on those different things. Summit Ridge was not built at the time. It was under construction. The developer, a different developer, made sure there was other access roads in and out of this type of development. The HOA that came in after that in 2002 blocked it. So all of the traffic coming from that large development already feeds onto Main Street and small roads that, that were never built. I mean, these are historic roads. There's no sidewalks continuously along the roads. There's no shoulders. And worst of all, there's no traffic control. This, this, if the town wants to absorb Main Street and put in some decent traffic control, that would be a step forward for us. But every time we get batted around that this is a state road and the t state is not going to put even a four-way stop to protect the children as they walk across the street. So if you stand there, and I, I would urge anybody at 3 o'clock when the schools get out to stand on the corner of Watersville and Maine, and when a, when a fire siren goes off and you have school buses, walkers, bikers, and those emergency services coming into an intersection with no four-way stop, it's pretty alarming. Um, and every single day I see kids do this. Kids on their bicycle uh, with no four-way stop, some cars slowing down because <coughs> they don't know what to do when a kid comes into an intersection, and some, some not doing that. So there needs to be a standard across the town in terms of managing these things from a purely public safety point of view. I notice in other areas, HOAs with collector roads like Twin Ridge, for example, there's not only stop signs, there's speed bumps. And Main Street has none, none of that. So my appeal to the town council and the planning commission is please look at this comprehensively and make sure that there's some level of equity across the town in terms of how you protect your residential population. Um, and, and I really don't want to see, again, <coughs> one development pushing the problem onto another residential area when we cannot keep attend, attending these types of things. So I'm just going to bring back, and I'll, I'll stop here, that this started in the 1990s. There was activity in 2002. There was activity in 2011. And now we're here 10 years later in 2022. Three so minutes. to try to get this done, uh, I'm just saying, look comprehensively, please. Thank you. Jesse Haven, Haven. I'm, I'm Jesse Haven. Um, I live at 4210 Candace Drive. Um, I'm my front door. I'm looking directly out at the power lines and and this property. Um, I've been at the last few meetings, and I just want to reiterate a couple of points that I, I brought up at the last two meetings, and that's um, the retail space being right there on the corner. I understand that the having it there is so that you can see it from Ridge Road, and that's important. But um, having it there uh, before we were promised that that the uh, commercial that the street that was goes out onto Candace was only for the local residents of this back area. And that's how it was mapped out before. However, now I can see that you know the only, the entrance onto Candace is is to service only the commercial property now. So that is not any longer <laughs> that entrance is solely for the commercials uh, use. So we have to consider that that's no longer an entrance or exit for the people that live in that property at all. Um, that's basically solely to serve the commercial entrance, and it will be used a lot, especially if we're talking about planting it right there on the corner and drawing in people from off of Route 27. They're going to go right down Candace and turn in there. And so I'm just going to point out again, we're going to end up with a real big traffic problem at Main Street in Candace if you're planning on having the commercial traffic solely feed into that one entrance there. Um, that was what my one point. Um, uh, number, uh, my second point was I, I, again, I said that the retail space should be flipped. Those villas should be up there on the corner, and that, that retail space should be next to the church. The reason I'm saying this, and I know that a church is a residential space, and that, you know, church on Sunday and la, la, la. However, that church is busy. They have late parties late at night, and again, the developers, you guys wouldn't know this because, unless you live there. I live right across from this church. They have floodlights around the church that face outward into the field, and the floodlights are on all night long. So whoever lives 
next to that church, and again, I know that's not really your concern as a developer, but uh, whoever's going to live next to that church is going to be listening to some loud parties, and that's great, great, good church parties, but they go to 11, 12 at night, and they're boisterous, and the lights are, the floodlights are on 24 hours, and so whoever's living there will have it shining directly into their backyards. Um, so that's, that's another point I wanted to bring about switching the villas over to where the retail space is and the retail space back to where the villas are. Um, that way the, all the pollution of the church lights and the retail space can commingle with one another <laughs> and we can all as residents be, uh, have our, our, our happy space. Um, I, I didn't get a chance three to minutes. ask. Three minutes, thank you so much. Um, is, when is the traffic feasibility study being done after this, the pre-concept or, or when, when will the traffic um, feasibility be done for this? It's done at the concept. It's at the concept meeting? Okay, so not, not during the pre-concept meeting, okay. Um, I just wanna note that, again, 70 houses and with three cars each, we're talking about 200 cars and with the retail space, let's talk about 1,000 cars going seconds. in and out. Um, every day, so uh, it's a major traffic on um, a concern we need to address, um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Carroll or Ms. Carroll? It looks like South Carroll. I can't read the first person. I can't read your first name. Oh, okay. Liz Rodriguez. Hi, I'm Liz Rodriguez. I live at 2716 Mystic Woods Court. And I just want to approach this another way. Um, I realize you are all good people. I try to see the best in people. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. This is about money. This is all about money. We all know we don't need any of this development here. We've lived here since 94. There has been a lot of development already. You can't go even to Chick-fil-A without waiting for 20 minutes. It is, it's a ridiculous plan and if, I get it, I get it. $100 million, worth $100 million is what I've heard. Who doesn't want that kind of money? But would I put money over the lives of people. Would I come and decimate a small town and then leave? And I've heard rumors, and I do not necessarily believe this, I've heard rumors that people have been paid off. I don't know of anything about that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying one way or another, but if that, I mean, I would hope that wouldn't be true, and I don't think you're that type of people, but I just think this is ridiculous and it's not, not necessary. I can see where, you know, you would get excited and, you know, want to, I mean, I just, I mean, I can tell that nobody's listening. Like nobody gives a, you know what, about any of this because it, it's, it's greed, it's money, it's evil. And there is no reason you, we all know we're struggling. The, the stores don't even have the capacity. They're, the stores have such a high turnover rate here. We need more commercial. We need more stores. Hell no. We don't need any of that. We don't need any of this. I just want to say what, what the hell is going on here? I mean, I get that this is a, this is a prime area, and you're going to ruin it. You're going to just ruin it for everybody. And you don't even give a crap about us. <laughs> Simone Blanchard. Hi, Simone Blanchard, 4073 Boltler Road. Um, thank you for this meeting tonight. I will say I'm happy that the number of townhomes has come down a bit um, from previous plans, so I'm happy to see that. I do just want to remind everyone that Harrison Lachere, the property right across from this property, so across Leisure Road, 
um, in between Leisure and um, Watersville Road on 27, 257 uh, acres of property um, is also in the works and the town is trying desperately to annex it so that they can get the land and build a 36 building office park on that land. So I just want to make sure that everyone understands that <laughs> this is not the only development in town and Harrison Lachair is right across the street. Will, is it Sakura? Uh, okay, thank you. Ryan Turner? Oh. Um, Dave Pyatt? Dave, you have to go to the microphone. No, I just signed my name in the command. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Hunt. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is R. Andrew Hunt. I live at 2406 Braddock Road outside the town limits of Mount Airy, but I do live in the 21771 zip code and, and call Mount Airy my home. I'm strongly opposed to the idea of high density housing in this area. And I realize that technically this is not high density because there's this stupid little line, imaginary line of power lines in between. So technically it's not high density by uh, technicality, but certainly by uh, anybody's common sense, this is high density. Uh, so uh, I am greatly concerned about this and the precedent that this approval of this project would set. Uh, this proposal and others in line for consideration by the town council will simply destroy the small town charm that drew us here from Howard County five years ago, specific to Green Tree. There are way too many housing units compared to the adjacent single family uh, neighborhood, which again, technically not adjacent because apparently the power lines make it not adjacent, but that's really stupid, it doesn't make sense. Uh, a big block of townhomes, again, I just learned that these are not townhomes, these are villas. <laughs> That's what you said, they're villas. So playing with, playing with definitions and terms does not make this uh, lipstick on this thing look any better. Second, um, this project layout uh, shows little to no imagination. Sorry, but I feel that way. And this rendering is about as cookie cutter as you can possibly get my six-year-old granddaughter could probably come up with something more original. This development would work in Rockville, Urbana, Laurel, Olney, Crofton, any number of places, but not our small town of Mount Airy. I'm not speaking for just myself. And finally, I drive on 27 regularly, and the congestion at North Main intersection would be, as already said, exponentially worse with cars from all these new homes, customers from this commercial space. Any so-called traffic improvements would do nothing to, do, to address the fact that you're adding hundreds or thousands of more cars to this section of the road, not just this section, but the entire stretch of 27. No matter how many traffic lights, expansions, and turn lanes you put on, you can't change the fact that you're adding thousands of cars. Uh, so you're gonna turn 27 into Rockville Pike. In, urging, in closing, I urge you all to remember that the town of Mount Airy is not an island. Green Tree is not an island. The decisions that town leaders make impact thousands of residents outside the town limits who Three cannot minutes. vote for them. I can't vote for you. I don't live in town limits. Three minutes. This impacts me. Thank you. Um, to the developer, this is just another plot of land to build on. To the owner, they want to sell it and make some money. Um, my father owns a lot of property in southern, in central Florida, out in the sticks. Uh, he's a developer. He sold a bunch of his land to the villages, if any of you are familiar with that. Turned his little town of Wildwood into just a big, giant 
mess, but he made some money. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, everyone in this town um, will have to live what you built. 15 seconds. Uh, so don't destroy our small town. Thank you. Um, at this point in time, if there was someone else that would like to speak, you may come to the come to the uh, the podium, and those that want to speak after her, please line up behind the podium and state your name and your address, please. Elaine Orient, six one four Cedar Brook Court. Say that again, please. Elaine Orient, six one four Cedar Brook Court. Ma'am, if you pull the microphone down a little bit. That might be better. Is that better? Um, I've been listening, and um, one thing that I continue not to see is consideration of senior housing for some of this or across the street, because senior housing does not add that many cars. It does not add burden to the school or require a whole bunch of sports courts, whatever. Um, so I would like to see senior housing considered here and across the street. Um, because there's, I think it would be less, you know, on the police department, less vehicles, less traffic here or on 27, um, less consideration for schools, et cetera. But I do understand one of the other comments about locating the commercial next to the church as, you know, putting them together rather than separate with this island in the middle, kind of um, getting the, the worst of both worlds. Um, and I would actually like, instead of commercial, because if it is moved by the church, it's not going to have any visibility from 27. Um, either here or maybe across the street or somewhere else, I would like the town to consider a YMCA, which has programs for every age. Um, um, I think that would be a valuable addition instead of a commercial building that without visibility, I think would be, you know, maybe more doctor's offices or real estate offices or support spaces. Um, and the other um, item considering across the street, I'll just digress for a second. I don't really wanna see something across 27, either a bridge or a tunnel or whatever. If you could connect that property on the other side of 27 to the shopping center by a trail or something where they could access Weiss and CVS and TJ Maxx. They would have access to retail also without having to trek across um, 27. Um, so that's Hi there, Monica Mansfield, 6282 Belmont Circle, Mount Airy, 21771. My husband and I consulted with a hydrogeologist. Actually, we've spoken to a number of hydrogeologists. We've spoken to Andrew Staley. We've spoken to uh, Tiffany <coughs> Vanderwerker, and uh, they've been quite helpful. So some notes regarding our water situation. Each house, each one of these new homes will require 250 gallons per day on average in order to survive, possibly more, possibly less. At the March 2022 Carroll County Water Resources Council meeting, Zach Neal, hydrogeologist with Carroll County, noted that Carroll County is still experiencing a water level deficit. See meeting minutes here, which I've posted under the comments section of this feed going live. From the MDE 2021 report, water supply in the Piedmont region of Maryland smart development occurs at a density 
of at least 3.5 residential units per acre while drought year groundwater recharge in the Piedmont region is typically equivalent to one to two units per acre. Communities developing at densities beyond this depend on the recharge beyond the boundaries of their water service areas. Towns using groundwater as their sole water source have struggled with the problem of obtaining sufficient land to ensure that water recharge which occurs through precipitation and the more impervious ground that you have, such as asphalt and concrete and houses. Ma'am, if you speak into the mic, we can all hear you. Because we can't hear you. They yeah, can't hear you. The, the more impervious ground that we have that will be created by these townhomes, which do not resemble, according to the code, 112.39.1 A and B, Townhomes do not resemble the local area of single family homes. Just thought I would throw that out there. But back to the problem of the aquifer. We have one aquifer in the Piedmont mountain range. No, Barney, there are not four or five aquifers under the town of Mount Airy. We consulted with multiple hydrogeologists, Tiffany being one of them. And they confirmed that we do not have four or five aquifers unless you define an aquifer in general as a body of water. So, uh, so we are at a deficit, and, uh, and so that's a real problem. So if what happens if our aquifer has a struggle? We have a problem in that our aquifer is an uncontained aquifer. What's that mean? <coughs> Anybody know what that means? It means that it's more prone to contamination. So the more Three you minutes. disturb the land, the more potential you have of contamination. So we are at a deficit in the water currently, just with the housing demands that we have now. So 45 seconds. what's going to happen with that? What's going to happen if we add more houses? What's going to happen to your water? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Binack, and I reside at 1710 Trussell Street. I'd like to thank all of you for serving on our commission, and I appreciate and understand that this is a difficult job, and we do appreciate you uh, serving our town. Um, I do want to uh, want you to keep in mind with this. I've heard numerous talks about affordable housing. Mount Airy, in my 26 years in property management, we do not need affordable housing in Mount Airy, which also states in our 2020 survey that this town does not want affordable housing. I have seen many residents move out and trash the apartments, which cost between 2,000 to 4,000 return to the, the apartment home back to a rentable status. As a town council and commission, um, will not have the opportunity to approve or deny the purchase of apartment community. You do not have the control over rental criteria, which include not limited to sex offenders, people that have committed major crimes, bad credit, and rental history. If we must have affordable housing component, then the Green Tree development would be the perfect fit for an affordable 55 or better senior living neighborhood, which would fill your affordable housing component. I work in, with a company that specializes in affordable housing and affordable senior care over the last year. There are not many senior living homes, or apartment, affordable, uh, apartment, I'm sorry, affordable housing components, which include MPDUs, which is moderate, moderately priced dwelling units, which Montgomery County requires to have each new building have. Bond units, tax credit, or LIHTC, which is a low income housing tax credit or an income based. Four, four out of 11 assets that I manage are 55 to 62 or better. It is independent care living community that is affordable. We, have, uh, we provide them with an apartment home or duplex um, at an um, affordable price and we maintain their home. This is more than a um, valuable op option for the town if we must develop this land. 
Um, and I encourage you guys to, we don't need more commercial property. We don't. The town is already have, we already have vacant um, commercial land. Why would we put in more commercial into uh, leaving Mamza or downtown streets to suffering their assets if we're gonna put in other stuff up here? We wanna attract people to downtown. It's cute, it's quaint. It makes Mount Airy the charm that it is to have these older buildings down here and for them to see it. 45 um, seconds. I just encourage you guys to take a look at this. Um, you know, with senior living, there's less cars, there's less water, sewer. It, it just is all around and it takes up our um, uh, affordable housing component if we must have it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Yuzo, 3169 Caveat Court. Um, piggybacking on that with the affordable housing, I know there was discussion about trying to draw the young singles here. It's not a town for young singles. I mean, there's not enough corporations for them to work. There's not enough activities for them. It's not going to draw the singles like you guys might think. You know, that's, that's Frederick, that's, you know, Montgomery County, whatever. I agree, I think we need senior housing. And we, you do need to look at Lashear because somebody said something about commercial buildings in there, but I also saw that that's a possibility of 550 more homes. So it's gotta be Beck, it's gotta be Green Tree, and it's gotta be Lashear taken into account. That's it. Um, thank you. I appreciate the comments about the um, affordable housing and the youngers, but we're discussing we're having a discussion right now on Green Tree. I know that everything we're, is together and we're trying to affect and get things straight, but is there anybody else that has a comment on Green Tree at this time? Seeing none, um, I'm going to ask, um, this was to be for an hour. Uh, and then we were to go into a work uh, a workshop for um, <clears throat> for the council and the um, and the um, zoning. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say, Frank, at this time um, before we go into that. But we are going to be discussing it farther. Ron Thompson, Van Mar Associates, for the developer. I, I believe the process in the workshop is we'll make a brief statement or two about the project and at that point then listen to comments from the public officials. Okay. Roxanne. Yes. Can we uh, take a small recess till 730 because I need to yes. get the link back uh, with CMC back to our town council members? Perfect. Yes. So we will adjourn for now. We will um, readjourn, come back together at 7.30 for the workshop. Thank you. Uh, you all are welcome to stay, however, as you know that we do not take comment during the workshop. Thank you.
um, last joint session here, um, the um, developer will give a presentation of approximately five minutes. Um, each one of the council and planning commission members will then have seven minutes to ask their questions. When they're finished, we will um, ask if there are, are any other questions to that the council or planning commission, sometimes other questions arise as another questions asked. And then we will wrap up the um, workshop. It's scheduled to go for an hour. All right. Um, Larry, do you want to speak first or do you want to wait? Uh, I, I can wait. Uh, the I'll wait till the end if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, May I make yeah. that statement? Give you the briefing first? Yeah. Before um, you go into. Yeah, no, yeah. That, I just wanted to know if you wanted to speak first out of everybody or not. So, um, um, Ron, if you'll go ahead and give the presentation or. Thank you. Ron Thompson, Van Mar Associates, the engineer for the uh, project. With me tonight is Frank Potapan, the owner and developer for the project, along with Clark Schaefer, uh, attorney for uh, Mr. Potapan. Project has been around, as you've heard from many people tonight, um, actually for almost 20 years, working to try to work with a uh, mixed use type of development, townhome, senior housing, market rate housing, brought us to, uh, with the MXU, CC overlay, we brought forth a concept at the last uh, few months that had 70 townhomes with 19,600 square feet of commercial space. That had been consistent with what we had been proposing for a long time for the project. Again, uh, stepping back one step further is this is a uh, unique piece of property and the fact that it consists of both CC zoned uh, property which is now with a mixed use overlay and a residential portion divided by a uh, major power line running through the middle of the property or, or uh, fort. Uh, and the part that we're proposing for the MXU CC development is really a triangular piece of ground. At the last town council meeting where the town council was considering whether or not to allow the pre-concept sketch plan to go back to the planning commission and move forward in the concept plan. The town council listed a few items that they wanted us to look at. Actually, I think there were three. One was diversify your housing from townhomes to include a different mix. The second was the park area, and I'll distinguish that from open space. Everybody talks open space. And it, there are two, uh, two areas of open space, the natural nature open space, and then parkland open space, where you have uh, area for tot lot, people to run around, kick a soccer ball, whatever, uh, for it. So we stepped back and took a look at the development. We kept the commercial development in the corner at the intersection of the streets. Again, it will provide a focal point which would, will become more evident during the uh, pattern book phase. But it also, from a commercial perspective, we wanted it to be um, market seen from Route 27 Main Street. Housing development, we diversified it to include villas, uh, attached villas, along with townhomes. Our total mix now is down to 69 units from 70. Again, remind you that almost 20 years ago, we st there were 112 units, and I believe even before that, there were 200 and some units in apartment complexes there um, in a mixed-use development. So we've taken, I guess, the 
the haircut pretty close, got haircut Saturday, but not quite as close as what uh, we've had to do for the uh, units here. So we have 24 villas. The villas include, are attached four per unit. They have basements and they have ground floor master bedrooms. So that, uh, that was one of the comments that wanted to see a mix where people could purchase a unit and not have to climb the stairs and to reach um, the so-called living quarters or bedrooms for it. So that brings us to, I think it was about 35% villas and about 65% townhomes. Second element was that um, there was no objection in, to having uh, the townhomes front onto the street. Street is the standard town of Mount Airy, 34 foot wide street, um, landscaping sidewalks along each side. By doing that, that gave us more space to take what had been previously 0 0.3 acre park and increase it by a factor of four to 1.3 acres. Now we're able to do that by installing a retaining wall along the, um, I guess, southern side of the property um, in order to level out the, the ground so that it is indeed a play area. And it is referenced on your plan as a uh, uh, proposed, ret or has retaining wall along it. That actually runs all the way, starting somewhere around Main Street all the way down to the end of the uh, townhomes. So we think with this plan, we've brought, come back, uh, <coughs> took a look at what your comments were, and quite frankly, we think it's a better plan than what we were showing before. Uh, and thank you for your comments, and uh, we'll stop there, maybe reserve the right to wrap up with a comment or a request after all of the uh, workshop comments. Okay, thank you. I'm going to start with the people that are um, online. Um, Jason, do you want to start, please? Sure, I have uh, no problem uh, starting. Uh, the microphone, uh, whoever was speaking into it, was breaking up online. Um, so if my questions uh, restate what was already said, I apologize. Um, who was uh, who was addressing us th this evening? That was Ron. Okay, from um, Mr. Thompson. Thank you very much for uh, coming this evening, and um, thank you for also listening to the comments that were presented uh, by the council. Um, I I didn't hear, and if you can please clarify, you said there were three. Uh, there were three concerns brought um, out of the council meeting, and and I only I only heard two. Did you address a third one that I missed? The to restate the three. The first was to create a housing mix other than a 100% townhomes, which we did by adding 35% of the units being villas. The second was. Uh, no objection to having the townhomes have their uh, driveways onto the, <coughs> the street, which by doing that created additional parkland. We increased the park from 0.3 acres by a factor of four to 1.3 acres. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Um, I also saw in the plan uh, with the re retaining wall. Um, retaining walls usually help with grading and uh, water runoff. The degree of slope for the parkland, uh, can you give a, can you, are you able to provide an estimate for the degree for the for the open space parkland? The reason for the retaining wall is simply that the contour change was too great. 
we would look to try to have the park field somewhere around a 5% to facilitate flow of water without ponding of it that you normally would have with anything less than that. So that's why there is a retaining wall along there. We have okay. not done the final grading at this point in time, uh, but we recognize that the 20% uh, slope that was there would not be conducive to a park play area for the residents. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, although, um, in my opinion, uh, 5% is, is still a little much. Um, I, I appreciate it. it. It is greatly reduced from 20%. Uh, my, my other question related to the commercial property, have you um, or the owners uh, given any consideration to a, uh, a commercial entrance only? versus um, leaving an entrance open for both public and deliveries? I, I think that um, from a traffic perspective, it's, you know, it's one thing that we could sign or get our vendors to use the entrance say off of Candace Drive. Uh, we really need two entrances for the commercial area there. Um, if we only had one entrance, I think we would be inducing traffic congestion uh, at the Candace Drive Main Street intersection. Okay. And, and again, My, there would be a traffic study that would be ahead, done so at the concept plan stage. Thank you. My, my last question, and then we can uh, move on with other council members, is when, when does your waiver for this property uh, end and would turn to commercial? Do you know the, the month and the day? We, we believe that, uh, I don't know the month and the day because we, we still don't have a signed uh, special exception, but um, we believe in this fall it will need to be renewed and we've held off renewing it or requesting that renewal until we have uh, town council has approved a pre-concept sketch plan moving it back to the planning commission which would then bring you know the special exception would be looked at and extended thank you for your time this evening Thank you, Jason. Um, Lynn? Hi, can you hear me? No. Um, no, you're very faint. Can you hear me? No. Can we turn her up? <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> Try again, Lynn. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, a little better. Let me try my headset. Okay, let's try one more time. Can you hear me? Yes. Is that better? Much better. How about I'm going to put on a headset. Tell me if that's better. <laughs> okay. Lynn, you, Lynn, you sound um, great, so continue. Yeah, you sound good just the way you are. All right, I won't move and I won't adjust anything. <laughs> so first of all, I want to coming tonight again to yes. have their input. And Is that better? sorry, that's the phone. I thought I'd try to get on my phone. No. Uh, thank you to everybody for showing up, for having your input. I was able until we got cut off to listen to a lot of public comment. And thank you for everyone for having your time. I do want to point out that I'm not missing this meeting because I want to. I noticed there were some comments on social media about council members not being present in the room. I had made it very clear in May that I was on my family vacation. So I'm participating now. So I want to focus my time today on citizen concerns. I've heard and read current and past 
citizen questions, comments, concerns, going back to workshops in 2018. And in 2018, I think someone pointed it out, and I apologize, I've already, I just wrote everything out to get through it. It was 112 homes, I believe, slated as senior housing. Residents then said they knew this property would be developed, but they would rather have it mixed use commercial. The property was zoned commercial, but then changed to mixed use commercial. And the comments I read from then were many residents were not opposed to the development, but were opposed to the then layout rows of townhouses with front or rear loading garages, no yards, separated by paved alleyways. So my first question to the developer or to Ron or anybody is, if you could explain to the residents why this development could not be all single family homes or as council did ask you and thank you for putting in the villas because we believe those are conducive, at least I do, to senior citizens having the first floor master bedroom. Um, it looks like you've made those changes to incorporate citizen and council input, so I thank you, but I just wanna know if you could explain why it can't be all single family homes or all senior villas to lower the number of townhouses and add senior villas. And then I don't know if you wanna answer or let me go ahead and get all my stuff out. Sure, ask your questions and then we'll answer them. Okay, and then um, a comment someone had made about senior housing, I heard a public comment and that caught my attention because we have requested to have that. Um, another concern residents have, so that's relating to number of homes. Another one they have has to do with number of new residents. There's a continued concern as with any new development, as we had with a lot of the developments that people live in now, about the impact on our schools and the impact on our streets and roads. So my question was, are the villas targeting our growing senior population? And if so, that would lower the potential impact to our schools, which I believe someone commented publicly, because there's no school age children, and lower the number of cars per household, as people have talked about. A senior citizen home would most likely have two cars as opposed to a family that could have increased vehicles with teens and young adult drivers. I know we have seven cars on our driveway with all the drivers. So that had to do with the number of residents um, is, are the villas targeting senior population that would lower the number of people that would go into this development? Then I had another question regarding the Summit Ridge connection on Scotch Heather Road. At the end, it's always been slated as a connection to Green Tree. The Summit Ridge residents have told me that they were aware and have always known that this road could potentially be opened up as a future Green Tree development connector. They knew that going in that that dead end they have would potentially open up. It looks like on the new plan, it's marked as an access trail and not a road. So I'd love them to um, cover what that is for the residents as far as the access trail and the walkability. The other thing residents are very concerned about is water impact. Residents surrounding this property are concerned about their well and their water, the potential impact this development could have on their wells. So if you could explain for the residents where the water from this development is coming from and will that potentially affect their wells. And then the other thing I hear a lot is we want no development at all. A lot of residents would like to see this property as with other projects in front of this town council and in front of us now remain as an open field and not ever developed. So hypothetically, if a group of residents or investors wanted to band together and purchase this property to keep it as a field, generally what would that cost them? I know that's probably a little unrealistic, but I just wanted to bring it up because people have talked about it. You know, why can't these properties just stay open fields? And then, um, and, and I did make a comment in one of our meetings about people do have the right and what I meant right to capitalize on their assets and the person that called me a complete idiot you, i'd love to meet with you you know nothing about me my education background my gpa my job experience what i meant by that was we as residents have the right to sell our home and obviously if that's our main asset we want to make a profit so that's what i meant by that so if you could address if they wanted to buy this property you know any general idea and then Lynn, the last thing I have seconds. is I really like the suggestion of switching the commercial and residential that a resident brought up tonight. And interesting to hear 
what they told us, because I don't live up there, to, about what goes on with the lights and the church and the events. So if it's at all feasible to switch the commercial over near the church area where it's already kind of a commercial thing with the light pollution, et cetera, I would love for you to like take that into consideration. So thank you again for listening to the council and to the residents and considering all of our concerns and comments because we are town residents too, but thank you everybody. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I'm going to go, since Brian is off, I'm going to go to him you, and then we'll come you, back. You want Brian, me to answer her? Um, yes, I'm sorry. So here are the answers to your questions, Lynn. Great, thank you. I could say I'll pick A, B, C, A, but I'll, I'll give you the answers here. Uh, why no single family homes? Quite simply, it's not a product that we wanted to produce in this uh, development. Uh, it just, for the amount of infrastructure that we, we're running over a mile of water line and sewer line connecting the various systems within the town, both in terms of um, Summit Ridge, uh, Main Street, it just uh, goes on. So that's one of the reasons uh, that we were not pursuing uh, single family homes. Also, it's been um, market wise that there is a need for quality townhomes, villas, uh, even though single family homes sell out rather quickly like they did at Brittany Manor over three years. Uh, nevertheless, there is this product need within uh, the Mount Airy area. Why no senior housing? And are the villas targeting senior housing? We don't know. Uh, quite frankly, we are two years. I'd love to, to promise Frank that in a year, we'll be getting building permits and constructing, but the reality of it is through the site plan process, we're over two years away. I hope it's only two years away from being able to move forward in construction. We don't know the market. It could be uh, without being designated senior, the marketing may focus on senior housing or it may be uh, just staying market rate. Uh, but at this point in time, we are proposing market rate housing. Uh, and again, at the time of construction, uh, the market to the developer will help dictate the sales of those villas. Uh, Scotch Heather connection, uh, the annexation agreement prohibits the connection of Scotch Heather and the Green Tree Streets. Uh, period. So we are not pursuing that. What we are showing in the white line is that's one of the water line connections. Again, networking the town's water system through Green Tree instead of a series of dead end water lines. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be, particularly if, uh, when this becomes public open space, since there's a shortage of open space, that there will be walking trails that will connect the communities there. Water impact as part of that annexation agreement. Well number nine site was given to the town of Mount Airy uh, along with the 88 acres of Windy Ridge, now Windy Ridge Park. Uh, with that was a commitment promise of water allocation for the development there. And that has been carried, uh, Barney can correct me, but it has always been carried in his water allocation formulas of available water uh, that is not assigned within the town. Mm -hmm. There are no new wells being proposed. We are keeping over six acres of the development as natural, well, five acres natural open space, no development on it. And then we have the 1.3 acres of the park that will also can be accredited to water recharge along with the lawns around the villas also. 
cost to keep it open space? Uh, all I can tell you is I know the cost of an industrial lot is $800,000 an acre. So I'll let, I have no idea, but it ain't cheap. Okay, okay. Um, Brian, do you have any questions? Are you there? Okay. Did he drop off for some reason? He's just not talking. He's what? He just don't. He's just not talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brian, do you have any questions? Oh. Is he unmuted? Okay. I'm going to go to Carl. All right. And um, we'll go back if we need. We good? Okay, Carl. All right, thank you. First, I'd like to uh, kind of sound like what Jason and Lynn has said. Uh, thank you for the people that have shown up to speak tonight, to attend, take out the to take the time to come to the meeting tonight, the ones that are watching, and I would like to thank the developer and their designer for taking into consideration what I said at the uh, town council meeting of adding villas and what other people have said about parking, you know, more park parkland, open space, and senior housing and stuff. And to really to reiterate what Lynn said, I was unaware that people were making comments on Facebook about where were some people. Uh, one of Jason Poyer's one of his children is sick, and he's uh, acting as single parent tonight. So he is staying home with a sick child, and he is took the time out to do the face, Facebook comments. So this is important to him, and he did take the time out to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to uh, listen and ask questions. So, again, thank the developer for all this. Um, while the plan is an improvement, especially in areas having the unit variety and gives us an increase in open space, I still have concerns on a couple things in the new design, just more tweaks than anything else. Um, primarily with the road design, um, I am concerned with what I would say the dead end street alleyways up there. Um, is there a way to just make those curved streets and put the one at the south end and one at the north end, Frank? Uh, is there a way just to make that curved streets and then maybe put some units you know, in the open space there and maybe just not a dead end street? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I, when I looked at it and, and really studied it, I said, okay, the, these are going to essentially three or four units. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really view them as a dead-end street at that okay. point in time. It's not a high traffic generator uh, mm -hmm. for it. And, it. and part of it being I'm doing a unit count and I'm trying to preserve park space yeah. and, and create a large park area. All right. Yeah, no, I just, I'm looking at it from a town maintenance perspective and plowing and things of that nature. So if it can be, I would appreciate it. Just, you know, take a quick look and see. Uh, I was concerned with also with the backyards as for the villas along Main Street with the backyards next to Main Street. But upon thinking of that a little bit more, I think it would be more of a safety issue if they were put on the Main Street, have the entrances on the Main Street because that's a busy intersection with acceleration and deceleration and the um, bike lanes there. So I think on second thought, looking at that, I think it's unfortunately, it's a little bit, the people that would own those, the backyards would be against Main Street, but for the overall safety of the street, it's better to have them enter into the, uh, enter and exit into the development like they are. And we would also see that as being a fence along Main Street fence and to street. provide them with a separation from 
the traffic on Main Street or activity on Main yeah. Street and their backyards. Okay. And of course, there's landscaping yeah. in addition to that. And then um, I think the third tweak I have on this one is to be consistent with what I've said about back and stuff and the congested feel of the townhomes. I know, is there a way if you could <coughs> consider removing uh, a max of five per townhouse block? I mean, instead of the six there? Not really. I don't know. It, it would be nice if you can make it work because it would just be consistent with the other townhomes in town, the town we, we kept it as six and we had, uh, you'll see a few dash lines in between. Yeah. That created pedestrian connections from the front of the units to the rear of them so that mm -hmm. everyone has access within three units, basically, of accessing their backyards for any type of mowing or any okay. other type of activity. All right, and <laughs> now I'm seeing from the citizen comments about maybe switching around the commercial, you know, flip-flopping the commercial and some of the residential, but I'm not sure if that would work or right properly. I do get, I do understand the light pollution from the Baptist Church there, because I, every time I drive by it, I do see that too, so I do, if that's in town, maybe we should make sure they're following code on that one, that there's no um, off-site illumination. Uh, but that pretty much <coughs> concludes it, because you did take a lot of my considerations into the redesign, so I'm kind of limited on what I can seconds. say on request. But again, thank you for all doing that. And thank you for pointing out that there will be direct access via trails from Scotch Heather eventually and down to the other open the national park land and further down to the soccer field if this ever gets developed. Time. Um, Steve? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming out and expressing your views and uh, suggestions and concerns. Thank you to the developers and the designers. Let me get right into it. Um, how many individual dwelling units are needed for this project to be economically feasible in, in your view? You're, you're at 69 now. How, how many are needed for you as a developer to say, we can, we can make this a viable project? I mean, we don't typically look at a project like that. Um, again, our previous iterations had 112 units. We've, we've cut 39% out, out of that number to get to the 69 units. Um, and as uh, Ron had stated uh, about 20 years ago, there was a plan out there that right. showed all first floor commercial. Understand with over 200 condo units. Okay, let me ask another question. Um, would your plan be viable with 63 units? You've got 69, would this be viable with 63? It's a fair question. I, I keep, without having a plan that I can, I can give to my contractors to get pricing back, I can't tell you where that, that magic number is. Well, that, that would be a question I'd like answered maybe th as a follow-up. I think the answer to that question is that we're exceeding the three acres per hundred people for open space. So when we look at this, we have over six, what was it, 6.3, yeah, about 6.3 acres. We need uh, mid five acres to meet that three acres per hundred people. So we've exceeded that from, uh, I think we're 69, keep going lower at some point. You can't afford all of the uh, water and sewer lines and the infrastructure involved. Okay, People talk me, about wanting bike paths and everything else. All right. That all has a cost. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna circle back on that one, but next question. Um, can you give me an example of excellent design of this development? How does this design create synergy, efficiency of design, and an increase in walkability? I'm only asking something that's right out of our code. This, the plan you have in front of you is an, is an example of an excellent design where we've taken the mixture with the consideration of the configuration of the property to configure the mixture of residential and commercial. 
Walkability, we've talked about that there, you've got sidewalks throughout the development, sidewalks, at least we'll have a sidewalk along Main Street and along with walking paths through the development. How so about this is an example of Synergy an and efficiency design. of design. This is the example of it. Do you think this is a good example? Absolutely. Okay. Um, next question. How does this development display harmonious and coordinated development that is consistent with and has compatibility with the surrounding uses? Again, the compa compatibility of it with the mixed-use development of having both commercial and residential. Uh, you know, in a, from a design perspective, having commercial near the intersection and again having that be a focal point architecturally instead of a sea of townhomes for people driving into the town uh, is something that would be desirable from the town. The okay. town considers this an entryway into the town of Mount Airy. All right, thank you. I heard from, from several citizens that they did not think this was compatible with the surrounding uses, but that, that's a data point. That, let, me, that, let me ask that my is next. their perspective, my not next, mine. Thank you, my next question. So it's interesting, and I'm still learning, I'm always learning. Um, we have a lot of different zoning categories for the town of Mount Airy, from neighborhood professional to limited commercial, lots of granularity, lots of specific buffering requirements for each of those land use categories. For the mixed use land category, my words, it's a little bit like what I would call the wild, wild west. I don't see a lot of buffering specific criteria. So my question, and it's actually more to our planning commission. I would like some planning commission members to answer this because I look to you as an advisory group to help the council. So this particular commercial space, um, I don't see a lot of buffering here. I don't see landscaping that helps to separate the commercial from residential. I have a question about light and noise pollution. Um, I'm just curious from my planning commission members how do you, what is your opinion on, is there adequate buffering of this commercial space to the residents that are backed up to that space? If anybody would like to answer that. What's your view? You mean right now? Yes. Well, I, I would like point, to answer that because I don't think we don't have that, I'll answer. Okay. At this point, this is a pre-concept and we would not see that until we got to the concept plan. That's when all of that is developed. That's when you come into the lighting, the landscape, the architecture, or what things are going to look like. At this point, these are just place marks on the, on the plan so that we know where it's going to go and how it's going to face. And then in the concept plan, and the pattern book, we get in, we dig deep into what is going to happen. And we can request changes in the pattern book when we see it. Okay. At Thank, this point, for you. him to come through with a full blown architectural plan, he's had to make, and I know people get upset when I say this, but. It does cost money to do these architectural plans, so we do not ask the most of them. We ask what the place settings are so that when we get to the next part, then there's going to be some real okay. digging into what we're going to see. All right, thank you. But a point, point to be made is on some other pre-concept -con sketch plans, I've seen actual icons of trees. I see no row of trees or any kind of a buffer between that commercial space and the residential space. My last question. Can I comment on that though? Sure. Um, trying to sell a house, I want to make it as attractive to the, per the, the person purchasing it. So we will have some type of landscape buffer that'll be between the back of those houses and the commercial. Okay, it'll be helpful to see it on the pre-concept sketch because other development concept sketches have had that on it. But let me get to my last question. So you mentioned about open space, and you are correct. You have a total of 6.257 acres of open space. 
but only 2.386 acres of that are in the immediate development, which is this area here. So my point is, for practical purposes, if I'm living in this development, I can take advantage of 2.38 acres of open space. That additional open space that's off in that triangle, that is actually 3.87 acres. So I'm just saying, yes, you're meeting the technical specifications, but if I'm an, an owner of a townhouse there, 99% of my open space feeling is in that immediate area, and it's really not quite as much as, as you're selling it as. I think that's, a, that's my observation. I, um, I would disagree with that because people People try to talk about open space as being, oh, let's, let's grade out an open field instead of looking at where are nature trails, trees, uh, opportunity to walk through and observe nature. That's what this pro development includes, both mm -hmm. walking trails through nature as well as this park open space for the, immediately adjacent to the residential units for the children to come out and play in or families okay. to hold their picnics on. Yet at the same time, it's connected through walking trails, or will be once we go through a concept plan. Okay, uh, well, another for, question. The commercial space, is there any office space in, in that commercial? Will there be any office space, for example, so that in concept, somebody who lives in a townhouse could maybe go over there and work as their office? Because that is one of the concepts of mixed use. You're integrating living, working, and shopping and open space. But I haven't heard any office mention in that space. And uh, the market will dictate that. You know, market studies over the past, since COVID, have shown that there's been a decrease in office space because more people working from home, um, a decrease in retail because people are doing more online shopping, um, an increase in industrial uh, because of the uh, online shopping, the, right. the, the the box stores that are, have distribution centers. Okay. Um, All right, man, my last comment that's is. That's actually time, but. Is, is more, it's a closing comment. It's more directed to the citizens. I heard your comments about needing to take a comprehensive approach to all development and comments about this looking like a cookie cutter and unimaginative development. I just want to say I am in sync with what you're saying and I've been talking about the need for a holistic approach in how we evaluate adequate public facilities, not just for individual developments, but collectively for all the things coming down the pike for our town. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Um, we'll start uh, down here. Leslie. Okay. Let's see. Good evening, everyone. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions based on what the citizen comments were first. So for example, Mark Richards mentioned the fire, potential fire issues. And the one thing that caught my attention was whether the actual townhouse, um, the materials, because he was saying if there is a fire, the materials are generally not fire resistant, so it could go quickly. So is there a way to use materials that are less um, you know, that are safer and create less hazard for fire. First of all, <laughs> there's a code, Carroll County, everything has to be sprinklered. So, um, I know, but that wasn't my question or his I, comment. I understand, <laughs> but when everybody says, oh my gosh, we're I'm just asking. huge fires, we, we've got, uh, I'll let Frank talk about the construction, but first of all, you've got sprinklers within all of the units. Okay. I mean, that would be inside the house, presumably, and I think we're talking about outside. But I'll, I'll go. I will go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think uh, Mr. Richards, one of his comments was about um, the fire gets up into the attic, and then it can, it can jump from build unit to unit. There are requirements uh, in order to create a fire stop, firewalls, um, to help per, uh, minimize and prevent that from, from occurring. Okay. And that's in, in Carroll County uh, building codes. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the connection to, to Summit Ridge, which Rita Misra earlier also mentioned, as well as Lynn, um, you know, however that, 
happened when the, the property was annexed in that, that there was this agreement that the road wouldn't go through. Um, we're not really sure how that happened and some of us disagree with it, but um, the only thing I've ever seen is minutes from a town council meeting. So if you actually have the annexation agreement, I would love to have a copy of that because I've never gotten one. Um, so just I'll just put that request out there. Um, and also regarding the connection to Summit Ridge, and just in, in terms of you know people talking about open space and whether it's really open or usable or whatever, um, these trails you're talking about, can people walk through there? Is it going to be a boardwalk? I mean, what's actually? Is it, wait, wait, don't answer until I'm done, or I'll lose my time. <laughs> um, just a thought, because I think that when we were talking about this. Last time, people were saying, well, that space isn't, you can't be usable for anything, as though you can't even walk through it. So that's partly why I'm, why I'm asking that question. Um, of course, Monica Mansfield brought up the water, very serious potential water issues, which, you know, I know we talk about off and on with every single proposed development, but um, I, and I know there's a well, but I think the, the point she was making is that, that Ultimately, every development, every, every additional use of water is going to potentially decrease the water for the town. And I guess what I just as a commission member would like is a, is a real, you know, I'd like a, a, a seminar, a, a presentation from, from Barney and hydrologists and people who can really tell us what we're dealing with here so that we can once and for all actually have a better understanding of of the situation um, because it does come every time up every time and people say well we have these wells and these wells but where does the water that feeds those wells come from and I think those of us who are not hydrologists or even scientists probably need a little bit more information about that and um, and I think my other question is really for the town because I understand that you're going to have sidewalks within this development if it gets built and there's going to be the required sidewalk from Candace along Main Street but we don't have sidewalks going from Candace along Main Street to Watersville and that's been talked about for many many years and here's going to be additional traffic onto Main Street none of which will be going through Summit Ridge it will all be dumping onto Main Street maybe a little bit on Buffalo depending I know people go out that way, some of it through the Wind Ridge. But, you know, for the most part, it's going to be on Main Street where, and that's where the kids do walk, you know, some of the kids that walk to school, kids bike, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I would be looking for some commitment um, for us to finally get some infrastructure and walkability from Candace to Watersville on North Main Street. And I think, sorry if I missed anything, but thank you. Oh, and you can answer that one other question that I had for go. Oh, it had to do with Summit Ridge connection and open space and stuff. Please. Uh, the town has, staff has said that these, there are major connections in terms of walkability and they'd have to be paved, like to Summit Ridge um, trails. Also, there are actually two connections, I believe, that would go to Summit Ridge. Uh, I also read in the paper where the town yeah, is... Um, Citizens Committee is working out Windy Ridge where they're actually hacking out uh, nature walking trails, particularly if you look in the back area. And that may be something, but I don't see those being paved. If, if that's. Well, I, I just mean, like, is there going to be a way to, for people to really access, to really walk? Or are they going to be walking for, through a bog, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, that, no. They, the main would be paved trails. I just built a uh, nature trail, um, actually in the Nottingham community. Saw that, very nice. Is so it gonna be like it? that? Is it gonna be wood? Or is it just gonna be, that's- now, Do you live in Nottingham? No, I don't. I, I just go down the easement sometimes and okay. I saw it, yeah. So yeah. that was done with, we use millings um, as, a, as a, a, uh, a surface for that trail. They connected to the boardwalk that, that went over and, and uh, crosses the, uh, the dam yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, abutment um, in Nottingham and connects over to 
uh, the sewer treatment plant road. <laughs> right. Very nice. Very mm -hmm. nice stuff. <laughs> but um, but that is nice, and that is you know something that if you're gonna if it's gonna be built, then we want people to be able to walk, to reduce driving as much as possible. So. But that was an area back then that people questioned. Oh, it's wetlands. You can't use that for for nature trail or, and it can right, be. But if you can you know, build those over areas it. can be utilized for, you know, uh, that type of, of use. Right. Okay. Thank you, Martina. Thank you. Thank you. And my John, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. My everyone's asked a lot of things that I had questions on, but I just had a, another question about, I see you've got parking sort of in the middle, like a few spaces tucked in in the middle there, but if someone were to have something in the cul-de-sac, like if they had an event at their house and they needed more parking, would you, I mean, would you consider knocking off a house or two to put parking up the side of those houses instead of having on the street? Because you know, if someone has a birthday and grandpa can't walk very far and they have to rearrange cars and I see a lot of potential problems um, with that. Um, and then, you know, just if, if there's any possibility of maybe taking one or two units off then that making parking up the side of some units instead of having it all facing the street. And has anyone ever, brought us like a 3D model to help sort of visualize how everything will look. I, mean, I know that's like an extra step, but it might help. I mean, at this point, we don't know what what would be approved, so we wouldn't, wouldn't put, put time the time and effort into gotcha. trying to do some type of modeling that, you know, this pl plan has changed considerably okay. over the last two months based on, you know, the previous plan that we worked with town staff on for, you know, 18 months to develop. Okay. Okay, and that's it for me. Thank you. Bill? All right. Very appreciative of the public comments we had tonight. I think this is one of the most productive sessions that we've had in terms of um, the, the joint interchange. Very insightful, very valuable to understand what your points of concern entail. I'm also very appreciative of the developer and the engineer uh, and how responsive you have been to the feedback that you got last time, the reductions you've made, the expansions that you've made in terms of open space. Uh, clearly, there's been progress. Um, overall, um, I'm, I'm very, very encouraged. Many of the topics and questions and comments that have already been made um, address what was on my list. Um, I just think we're going in the right direction, um, and I like the coordination between what townspeople and nearby residents are giving us and the response that we're seeing from, from the development team. Your turn. Okay, my turn. I am, um, since we're closing in on the um, 8.30, I'm going to yield my time to the mayor um, because most of my questions have been asked before I do that. Um, I also reiterate what Bill had said. I appreciate all of you coming. Um, the fact that you participated and spoke with the um, developer in the beginning, uh, there were some great ideas, good suggestions that came out of this meeting. Um, and it, it, I felt very positive about it. Um, and I also thank the engineer and, and the developer for um, the time that you've spent and the way that you have listened um, mm -hmm. to what the people in the um, town council are saying. So at this time, I yield my time to the mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, Chairman Hemphill, uh, appreciate it. Uh, um, Jason, if you're still online, I just wanted to ask a logistics question for the people who did not view the council meeting. Uh, the question being, uh, we do not intend on voting on this in, at the July council meeting. This would go to the August council meeting. Is that correct? Yes, this is, uh, this is not intended for a July meeting. Um, this will allow everyone to 
ponder the suggestions and, and keep this in the back of their mind. Um, the earliest would be August if another public hearing and meeting is not needed. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks so much. And, and uh, most of the other items were addressed, and I do know that if this pre-concept sketch plan goes, uh, makes it past the council, uh, the issue of the trails was a concern of mine as well in terms of, of being usable trails uh, that go through that area on the other side of the power lines. Um, you know, we're certainly dealing with it in Windy Ridge where we're along the side of a stream and it's, uh, you know, it's a muddy mess to get back there. So what you did in Nottingham looks beautiful. And I, I just hope that uh, if this pre-concept sketch plan makes it through during the concept um, plan that uh, in the pattern book that there is, um, you know, time spent to make sure that whatever trails are available, because I guarantee you 75% of those houses are going to have dogs and people who want to go out there and walk. So, uh, uh, so please keep that in front of your mind that, that we'd like for those trails to be thoroughly usable by the residents and anyone else in town. Thank you. Okay. Seeing, um, Brian, I don't think Brian's there. Seeing, um, none other. It actually is, uh, eight, it's actually, uh, 828. So at this time, I don't know, Roxanne, I apologize if you can hear me, but Brian did put in the message in our little zoom meeting that I had covered all of his questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. Lynn. And he was having, and he was having, he was having mic issues. But he said that I had covered all his questions. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Um, so we will not, uh, as stated by um, uh, uh, President Puerto, the town council, we will not be making a uh, um, scheduling the joint public hearing um, at this time. It would probably, like you said, come in August. Jason, do you think, or you're not sure? August or or hopefully. Roxanne, wasn't he talking about the vote? Right, as of right now, if I if I uh, don't hear anything from planning about another uh, public work session, um, it would go on the August agenda, and I would confer with John Breeding uh, Planning Department on that. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, once again, I thank everybody for attending. And those of you that stayed through the workshop, I do appreciate that. Um, we are going to adjourn, uh, take five minutes, uh, and then we will be going into our planning commission meeting for the evening. Uh, you're welcome to stay if you choose. I understand if you don't, but thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. <clears throat>
historic. Thank you. Our first order of business for this evening. I, I'm calling the meeting to order. I heard that Roxanne song came. <laughs> Is the approval of the minutes? I can't do anything. She's got to be here. I don't have a quorum. I, I can vote. I can't second it. I'm here for quorum, oh, so okay. you're good, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got you. Oh, you got yeah, that's fine. The first item of business is the, um, the approval of the minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes from May 2022. Is there a second? I second. It's been moved and seconded. We approve the April or the May minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. Okay, Brian, are you back with us? Uh, aye. Okay. I am with you. Better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I heard him. I just didn't. Uh, good. Um, going on to citizen comments. This is for comments um, of things that are items that are not on the agenda. Are there any co are there any citizens out there to make comments? <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you all are staying. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we would have our Carol and Frederick County planner. Uh, we received an email from Hannah saying that there wasn't anything new to be discussed. She would not be attending our meeting this evening. She would see us in August. And uh, Tim Goodfellow uh, will be here also in August, and he's the Frederick County planner. The next item is for introduction and recommendation to the Board of Appeals. This is for J&J &J Trash for an above ground fuel storage tank. The applicant's requesting a special exception to install an above ground fuel storage tank at its business located at lot 18A in the Twin Arch Business Park at 2504 Backacre Circle, Mount Airy, Maryland. Do I have a... Um... Madam Chair. Do I do a motion, Tom? I can't remember. Do Madam I have Chair, to motion this would you like just... would you like Ron Thompson to come up and speak on one of these, either one of the three projects coming up? Well, we just introduce this and give it and give it and uh, move it to the. Um... Right, you would give it a favorable recommendation. Or, okay. Or, or denial. Unfavorable. favorable or unfavorable. Okay, so we do have to know what it's about. So yeah, Ron, let's hear. Thank you, Ron Thompson for J&J &J Trash. You may not recall, but when we were doing the site plan, we initially thought we would include the above ground storage tank as part of that site development. And we decided to not do it at that point in time and maybe use local vendors. Since that time, of course, we all know the cost of fuel. He burns 20,000 gallons a month. Oh my gosh. Mm. Uh, mm. And he's had problems of quality of fuel where carburetors are mm. plugged up. Mm. And it's just at a point now, in order to remain competitive in his business, which is to uh, install an above ground fuel tank on the property. It's industrially zoned, it's allowed with the special exception. We would request a favorable recommendation to go to uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, before we take a vote, I just have some comments on the report that was given as an attachment, just to f get some clarification on it. Okay. Okay, that's, or to say before it meets to things, that, um, the word of above ground and underground is used interchangeably in the document. This kind of makes it hard to determine if it's above ground or uh, underground. I 
taking it to be above above ground. That would be a typo for me. They don't really allow the underground. They want above ground. Yeah, just you know, just have to clean it up for consistency and cleaning. Yep. And also, do you have a size of the of the def tank that will be installed there too? The diesel um, exhaust fluid, because that's not listed. I I do not know the size of that. Okay. And will you be required or following state code to have containment around it? Because it plans to show ballards, not any type of. Um, we'll have to do the tank itself has is itself. A containment will probably add a concrete dike around it, but it is a double walled tank. Okay. All right, but you'll be required to follow state code probably too. Okay. Cool. That's it. Thank you, Ron. So I have a question for Barney. Barney, are you familiar with approximately how many um, large above ground fuel tanks, tanks of this type that we have across town? Just out of curiosity. I know there's a number of them, but uh, I don't know a count offhand. Um, I know there's a couple on Backacre, I think Canyon yeah, Contracting I, has. Uh, I can remember the approval of at least a couple back there yeah. over the last few years. You, you have behind Town Hall, or the, the petroleum tanks? Those are underground. Are they all underground? Yeah, he's talking about above ground, I think. Yeah. But, but there's, there are a number of them, but uh, all of them, to my knowledge, have containment. Uh, even, even if it does have a, a uh, double containment system, like a double wall tank mm -hmm. with a, its own tank, it has a concrete tank as well as a shed over top. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's something that we've, you know, generally uh, encouraged. All right, so in your opinion, what is being proposed or asked for here in terms of the special exception, it's consistent with the way that we're dealing with similar tanks across town that they already exist. I, I don't think this has a, um, a cover over top. Okay. Or, or, or a concrete containment. Do you want to make a comment? I, I, yeah, but I, I, I had two issues. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm coming, I'm getting there. Gary Fry, 4021 Twin Arch. Okay, so I am on well water in the very adjacent area to this. Mm -hmm. So fuel spills is a very big concern for me. Um, I looked at the plan. It does not, there's a lot, there's, there's several parts here. The fuel transfer itself, there's no protection from that. So fueling the trucks and fuel coming from the tanker, no protection from that and the bollards are uh, in my opinion not sufficient to protect a, a, from a trash truck what a 30 40 thousand pound truck from hitting the tank um, the oil water separator is not connected to this in any way shape or form on the plan and so any fuel leak from filling the truck unloading a tanker is is going to the stormwater system so um, that's part one that i would ask you to do an unfavorable recommendation for the second part is when the council took or when the commission took up the concept site plan in november of 2019 it was assured by mr thompson that trucks were going to be off the road by three o'clock that's not happening so I understand he's here to tell you what you want to hear to get his plan approved, but that's not what's happening. You can see it out here. I've seen trucks coming down the road at quarter to six. Not, not, and we're not talking 15 minutes late, we're talking hours after when. So a traffic study would have been appropriate. It hasn't been done, so I would ask that the commission wants to show control. This is an opportunity to exert control um, and I would also say that the council has the ability to withhold the bond until a uh, traffic study is done by an engineering firm besides Vanmar. So those are my thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you. 
So the question is if we do a fa favorable recommendation to the, um, for the special exception or unfavorable at this point. I guess my question is to Tom. Tom, so um, if it doesn't show what we're requiring as a containment building or a, a roof over top of it, should we not uh, allow it to move to a Board of Appeals and that it should be redesigned to meet our code standards? It should be, but the uh, planning commission doesn't have the ability to, to stop it from going to the Board of Appeals. Uh, if it were an unfavorable recommendation, the Board of Appeals can take that into account. Um, what this body could do is to say, hypothetically, attach conditions to any favorable recommendations. So you could say, yes, but uh, only if they provide secondary containment whatever it is you said, uh, et cetera, so. Okay. Gary, I'm gonna ask you to come back up here. Let's, let's specify that. You were talking is. faster than I was writing. <laughs> okay, so. We're talking about the secondary containment. So the well water separator that's shown on the property. That was a well water separator. So, and I'll give, I'll give you all the, the, the quick and dirty of what I read on the plants in the last hour. Okay. There's a thousand gallon well water separator. That, that's. That, there are lines coming from the building that go to the oil water separator. Right. This 10,000 gallon tank. Is not connected. Is not connected at all. And 10,000 gallons leaking is going to overtake the 1,000 gallon capacity. So what, what is the, the solution to that? What, what's your recommendation in that regard? I mean, honestly, I think the right thing would be to put a concrete wall, retain, um, a Building. knee wall, essentially, all the way around it that would hold 10,000 gallons. That would also stop the force of a, a, a dump truck, or excuse me, a trash truck with its forks out. I mean, that's the reality of it. Right, because the, the first thing that you said was 10,000 gallons can be coming from the building, but the tank right. only holds 1,000 gallons. The oil water separator, which right. is designed to catch fuel leaking in the shop, right. catches a thousand gallons. Right, but and there's nothing. And there's nothing. But beyond a thousand, nothing. It doesn't catch or stop anything. Not to mention anything that you have a human factor of truck drivers filling trucks, right. tank dr tanker drivers filling the tank. Things happen. Right. So um, that, that's where I'm coming from on that. Right. Um, no, thank you. So Bar Barney has something to say as well. So just for clarification, I mean the oil water separator shouldn't be considered for this tank. It, it's completely a separate system. As for oil that's coming off the trucks inside the inside the base, um, but again, we're looking at a concrete containment. Um, separate from the metal tank, um, you know, as a secondary containment, and then a structure so that the rainwater doesn't fill up that con concrete containment um, to where any fuel that spills would just overflow. So you want to keep that containment dry. So that's that's the reason for the structure overhead. Okay. Does anybody have a motion? I'll motion to make an unfavorable recommendation to the Board of Appeals. Unless. I was unless stopping. I was stopping there. You guys can do your own motion <laughs> or your own recommendation. Well, can we can we attach on that 
You can like amend it or something. You know, <laughs> but can I ask it, you can ask the motion to be amended. Yep. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the wording because if I'll say it and then you guys only if they upgrade the design to meet current conditions of other tanks in town. You want to have it to meet code standards. Standards. Okay. Right. So you're saying you still want to do an unfavorable Unless. recommendation to the um, for um, the special exception unless the following conditions are met. I don't think that's correct, but I'll defer to Tom. So Leslie, I think is the movement if I saw. Yes. Am I correct about that? Yes, Leslie so moved unfavorable. It's her motion. She would have to be able. She would have to accept any amendment to her motion. Otherwise, it stands as as worded, and then there would be a second if there's a second discussion, and then a vote if you get that far. So, can I ask a question? Yes, Brian. Thank you. Is this, Mr. Thompson? Is this tank for diesel fuel, or is it for a def fuel fluid? It is for diesel fuel. Okay, because it says one above ground diesel exhaust fluid tank. I think they use that DEF tank as a way of capturing, and I, I'm not quite sure. Well, that's actually a separate fluid that goes into diesel engines. Into the diesel. Cut down on emissions. So I'm confused if it's going to be a diesel tank or if it's going to be DEF fluid because. 10,000 gallons is a diesel fuel. And then the DEF tank is used to add a fuel additive, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's to okay, so decrease. Oh. I, okay. Yeah, so you're putting a 10,000 gallon fuel tank in and a separate diesel exhaust fluid tank? Yes. yes. It's okay. Separate. Thank you. Matt? You, you have an okay. unfavorable. <clears throat> if, if you want to add conditions, it should be a something that says provided this this as opposed to no would you I'm be not, willing to amend your motion i'm not going to amend my motion because i'm not clear on exactly what is needed but you nobody has to second my motion that's right <laughs> correct <laughs> in fact nobody has at this point seconded my motion is we have the motion on the floor is there a second to that <laughs> seeing none Let's, um, is there another motion that someone would like to make? Uh, I'm not sure the best way to word it. <clears throat> May I offer something for you? Motion probably would be that a favorable recommendation provided that the system include a canopy and a concrete um, containment wall around the uh, facility. I like that wording. I think that gets to what we were saying yeah. is needed. Sure. Barney, you agree? Yes. All right. And if we could capture that wording, that would be what I propose. If you want to add to the engineer's approval, town engineer's approval, I mean, just to cover. Huh? What do we do about the fact that they're not getting off the road when they're supposed to get off the road? The road, he said that they're not, they're not fulfilling their obligation by getting off of the road by three o'clock. Well, I think that's a secondary issue. Okay. That could also be taken up with them, but I think in terms of the Sony Garden special exception, we could when we um but it won't come back to us correct because on the special exception then they no, they no, no, they'll no. have to come back to us no. so we can put that in then no it will not come back to us no nope. yeah, it won't come back decides. yeah i think we need to put that in there now well i think, I, I think that's why barney wanted to approve a final plan he, the town engineer wanted to be that it had to meet, he had to sign uh, okay, off. Okay, so we're we're putting in the, the town engineer, engineer's approval of the final plan. I think that's, there you go. That's, 
That's a smart approach. Okay, so it's been moved that we give a, a favorable exception, a, a favorable recommendation to the Board of Appeals with the following conditions that the canopy for the full system, fuel system, um, that there be a canopy for the fuel system, a concrete pad for the fuel system operations, and uh, town engineer approval on the final pla plan. It should be a concrete enclosure, not just a pad. Green enclosure, yeah. Containment wall. Containment. Yeah. I did say, oh, okay. Concrete containment wall. Is there a second? Okay. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, Brian. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Okay. That goes to the um, Board of Appeals. Yes. The next item are the reports and other business. The first item under other business is a request for an extension on S-18004, Twin Arch Business Park, Lot 19, Section 4. The applicant's requesting a second extension, second one-year extension of the approval site for the developmental plan. John, do you want to um, talk about this and then I'll have Ron. Sure. Um, so again, this was um, uh, Service Master. This was approved back in one second here. Again, so this was uh, approved back in um, 2021, right? So we had a final site plan uh, received approval when it was signed on June 9th, 2021. Um, and again, so the expiration date uh, was June 9th for the first extension in June 9th, 2022. Uh, the applicant did uh, submit his request prior to that date one day prior to that ex expiration, which allows me to still move it forward um, for your approval. Um, again, the uh, applicant for the uh, property was stating that he was having some, um, I don't know if it was financial issues. When it's so it was, uh, goes to about uh, construction cost materials um, and uh, the other issues were um, trying to determine the final structural design of the building. Uh, okay. And that's all I have currently. Ron, do you want to add on to that? Thank you. We're asking for another year extension. They are actively trying to move it forward. We've obtained a grading permit and they've done a cost analysis for two types of building structure, all block wall versus steel framing, and they're trying to figure out um, how to cost effectively move it forward into construction there. Um, I'm pressing hard for all of those buildings to get done so we can pave the roadway out there and complete the park. So uh, we're asking for a one-year extension so that Hopefully, well, the site work will start later this summer, and we're hoping that the building will fall after that. Um, okay. I can only assume, because I know that in other areas there are, um, well, I'm going to, do you think that, that the shipping is going to be a problem? Do you think that they can get all this stuff shipped in a year? Um, I'm hoping that may drive them to... Uh, a masonry block wall okay. for, to do it instead of all steel. They're, they're trying to, I'm hopeful that they can get it simply because I see steel is stacked along lot 16A as they're mm. doing the concrete pad there, so. Okay. Madam Chair, I just have but a that question. that is a problem, 200% increase in cost. Right, yes, Carl. Uh, just more of a formality, more of a, this original site plan was approved for a steel building. Would the site plan have to be reapproved if the material, or if they chose to uh, go no. to a con 
concrete? No, we'd go to a, um, uh, it wouldn't have to, it would just, amend I can't it. talk. Yes, we do amend it. Okay. it. It's more structural. It'll still look the right. same. It's okay. just a question of I just, how I, do they build and support it? It's, it's more, f more f for my own yep. knowledge. Thank you. Is there a um, motion to extend? Second extension. For a sec uh, second extension. I also move. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Um, it's been I'll moved. Be clear that it's for a year because I don't. Yes, for motion. a year. Is that in the motion? Okay. No, that was. Nope. It's been yeah. moved that we. Um, grant a second extension on lot 19 Twin Arch Business Park for one year to end until June 9th, 2023. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Did Martina second or Brian Beto? We kind of did it at the I same did. time. No, we kind of did it at the same time. Flip a coin. Okay, flip the coin. Sorry. Make sure that Deborah got it right. The next item is a crest for a placement building on lot 15. That's a King Sports Construction. Um, the town received a building permit for the replacement building to be located on lot 15, Twin Arch Business Park. John, would you explain what the uh, Sure. Um, so uh, this is, of course, King Sports that moved on to Lot 15. Uh, if you've been driving back back Acre Circle at all, you'll notice they have a new fence that they got an approval for, uh, in, sort of encompassing a lot of the property. Um, one day I noticed uh, they were removing a building, and um, and I thought to myself that was peculiar because uh, we didn't get a demolition permit, which would have been the cr proper procedure. Uh, and then uh, I think I'm not sure exactly. That, oh, then then the uh, they submitted a request for a building permit, and hence this is why I'm bringing it to you, uh, because again this would normally require um, approval uh, for the construction of the existing. The existing building was 5,000 square feet. This is a 7,500 square foot building, uh, and uh, again it's it's currently being installed on. Uh, impervious area already but instead of me just approving it uh, I wanted to bring it forth to you to determine if you felt as there was a necessi necessity to do a, an amended site plan uh, with this new building or possibly even looking at the entire site to determine uh, what their uh, proposal is in the future um, King Sports uh, has done uh, a lot of renovations to this property, taking over the uh, the Doc, Doc Fool's property. Uh, it's I think it's a 25 acre parcel. Is that right? <clears throat> is that correct, Ron? Yeah, I think there's eight acres of usable land there. Eight acres of additional usable land. You're saying? Yeah, you have forest conservation, stormwater management. Okay, um, so there's eight total acres on the property. So again, my my concern was I just want to make sure that you guys were. Uh, knowing what was happening on the property and again it's really up to you to determine if you give me the authority to go ahead and sign off on the building permit for the the, the new and improved building um, if you look at the packet there's uh, some elevations some close-up designs uh, they did go through stormwater management uh, <coughs> to make sure that they were uh, meeting uh, the requirements of the county's uh, and state requirements for stormwater management. Uh, if you look at the uh, inside the packet, you'll see some of the elevations that have been proposed uh, with multiple overhead doors, um, a couple uh, single single access uh, rear door. Um. So I think one of our questions to uh, to you and to Barney is: Does this? represent in your professional opinion a material significant material difference between a, a 5,000 square foot building that we approved in the initial plan and now a 7,500 
So this was never approved. This was an existing building that was on the property. Uh, again, this, this parcel, again, has multiple buildings right. that were already previously erected. Okay. Uh, I suspect, uh, I haven't heard this from Ron yet, but I suspect that the existing building that was there potentially was showing size, signs of age. Uh, I think it was probably close to 50 years old, maybe, maybe older, I don't know. Um, but I think, you know, Again, normally if it was if it was tick for tat, I would have signed off on it. But because it's an increase in square footage, um, I wanted to bring it in front of you to determine if you felt as though it was a requirement to go through and have an amended site plan showing the new building at its new location. Or if you're allowing me to move forward with the approval of the building permits. Um, well, Ron, planning. maybe you can tell us why it's share the share. Sure. Um, I kind of came into this <laughs> after it was in the process there. <laughs> uh, the King family is intent on improving the property to look nice. The existing structure, and it was about two-thirds of the building was torn down. The north wall was collapsing, and they just took it down and said, we're going to file a permit. It's actually 7,000, another typo on my part. They're 70 feet by 100 feet. Uh, building it'll be a nice building. I have informed them that a any additional new buildings requires an amended site plan. Mm -hmm. I think in the future there may be, but <coughs> right now this was of immediate concern. Mm -hmm. There are two items that have to be done on the site. There's a lot of pavement work to be done and a water line to be extended. I think they're think they told me their thinking is they want to get the building up so that they're not cutting and patching when they have to do the pavement overlay, and okay. it makes it a much more contiguous, smooth surface. So um, right now we're going through permitting with uh, fire department, storm water management signed off. Um, we would request the town sign off on this uh, at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? I have a couple, Madam Chair, if so permitted, for Mr. Thompson. Okay. Okay, I'll just, uh, John, John answered a couple of them, so I won't repeat them. Um, do, you, we, do we know what the building will be used for? Yes. It will be used to store his machinery, tractors, for turf equipment, okay. tractors, skid loaders, um, that, okay. that type of equipment, not but, maintenance, but it is okay. storage. Okay, but I'm saying, I'm, would it be used for storage of any of the, like the, re the removed turf fields or no. anything? So no, no it is for equipment, tools. Um, okay. But storage only, no working, because I they'd have to have they'd have to have a drain in there and a fuel, an oil separator. Okay, because I noticed that there's. If it's storage, it's not required to have a sprinkler system. I just don't want them to all of a sudden put it up and all of a sudden it becomes a maintenance shop unbeknown I, because I've, not, I, I've, I've I, replied to, I've been going back and forth with uh, Carroll County uh, fire inspection working out the issues okay, for it. Okay, I just, because I get the gusto, I get everything, but, you know, tearing down, no demo permit, not, not noticing the town, notification of the town and stuff is concerning me that they'll put it up and all of a sudden it'll be, become a maintenance building and they are not having the proper equipment in there. So I want them to be aware that no maintenance can take place in that. Also, it looks like there is an increase in square footage, so there will be an increase in impervious surface a little bit but also do we know if the existing it looks like from the site plan they're retaining a 2300 square foot portion of the existing pole shed is that going to be tied into this new building or is that it'll be adjacent right adjacent to it okay but it should not be connected in any such way so we can't really view that as a total square footage no increase of the building itself it was a finished building okay the one that came down was actually an old cow barn okay there yeah oh so yeah no, in, I... in terms of it did not increase the impervious area 
of the site because we had concrete and everything else. Yeah, it looks like it's going but over existing. We still had to provide stormwater management okay. treatment. And do you know if there'll be exterior lighting on the building? Like I want to say like no. the wall lights, wall packs or whatever no. they're called. Okay. And all right, the other question had to deal with the silos, but I'm not sure if what the final determination if we needed to weren't they supposed to be putting hard covers over the side? They're silos? working on it. They're working on it. Yeah, I mean okay. I've talked to them about that a solution we have to get to a solution okay yeah because I thought w the deal or portion of the agreement was within a year I might be incorrect I don't think there was a date set on that okay. but I think you know again and that was one of the things I wanted to re reiterate as well is the the requirement of the original site plan I think was to eliminate the residential use in the current house which I'm not sure if that's actually occurred yet um, and then also uh, was to cover those silos where the, the storage is. Yeah. So again, I don't know if that's a stipulation. And again, another reason why this is coming in front of you. Um, again, if they're, if they're doing this, what else is potentially happening? I just want to make sure that we're protecting the town citizens, our well water, et cetera. Um, and back to that, maybe there has to be an amended site plan showing these additional items if it's covering the silo, if it's, if it's um, you know, increasing this building size. Uh, again, I don't know if they've met all their previous requirements from the original approval. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fearful that it's going to get lost in the weeds. Yeah, and well, that's what I'm concerned I, I, I can address. They are working on it, and I've gotten reengaged to push them on it. They are, look, they are working with the current tenant in the building. They're trying to fill out subsidized housing applications and looking for housing for them. Their choice is to kick them out and let them live in a car or work. They're actively working to find housing for that individual. Currently, they serve as a night watchman, maintenance of the property. But uh, they are aware, I've talked with them, and they are desperately trying to find housing for them. Mm. Their, their children are entrenched in the Mount Airy school system and it makes it difficult yeah. but they are they know it can't be used as a residential property I mean I'm I would like them to follow the, the previous conditions but I don't want to be the, the mean nasty that kicks someone on the street from but I'm, I was more thinking of the um, silage covers and I, things I've, of that I've talked nature. to them that it m needs to move from the tarp to a hard okay a canopy type surface yeah, over just, yeah I mean I know I have no vote, but I'm just saying approval of the building permit without meeting the, we can hold the previous requirements not being met as a stick or a carrot for them to get that done before this building permit should be issued. Say again, Carl, I'm not sure. I'm concerned that if we allow the building permit to go forward without the other, without setting the condition that the other previous requirements have been fulfilled, primarily the silage coverage um, that we remove our I want to say our enforcement ability over them or the carrot and the stick type deal you don't you should not be allowed to move forward with the construction of the new building until the other previous conditions are met if I could yeah I think it's important for them because of steel being ordered and everything you do have a stick over them shortly later this year they'll be submitting a concept plan for lot 14A. If they haven't met your conditions on 15, you can right. ho withhold right. the processing or the approval of that concept plan. But they did buy 14A, and I'm supposed to be starting that okay. August probably. Right. Are they That's doing fine. a revised plan for that then, you're saying? Or are they just going to start construction? construction? 14A? I have to start us. I have to come in with the site plan. Okay, I was thinking of the other, their previous lot that they had approved the site plan on. No, not 17. Well, as, as long as we have some type of enforcement you, you ha mechanism you have a number to hold of, over them to get number it done. Of sticks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gary. Gary for I 4021 Twin Arch. Um, if I may offer a suggestion, I think there's a lot of concern. I think Carl hit on it. What? What's which way's up? 
And I think it would be appropriate to get all the answers and, and, and truly document out what you're approving and actually approve the process. And I, and I don't mean this in a disrespect or what have you, but in six months, a year, whenever they go for lot 14, we could be looking at a different planning commission. I don't, don't mean that in any disrespect, but saying, well, we'll hold this later, they're not actually related. Right. You, they could be forgotten. And so while I understand the concerns, the, the economics, there's a family involved, the, the, that's not necessarily the planning commission's responsibility. I think you need to put something forward that town staff can enforce. For, for building permits and, and site plans. Thank you. I, I agree with that. I was going to say yes. too, that it should stay um, with that with the lot itself. It should not be another, contingent uh, on the other lot. I agree. Have they got the permit yet, or they've applied for it? They've applied for the building permit. I have not signed off on it yet. Okay. This is for the construction of the new building, replacing the existing building they tore down, which is <laughs> two thousand square foot larger. Than the previously previous existing building. Don't we have something in code requiring something? If there's any increase in building square footage, can they do that without? This is not a new. They're replacing a building that was falling down, so it's not okay. new construction. All right. Thank you, Roxanne. Um. I mean, it's not new construction, even though it is new construction, because yeah, it's a I new guess. building. Yeah. So why isn't it new construction? I understand it's a replacement. Yeah, I, it is new construction. But it's larger. But it's larger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, it's not replacing. Same size. Same size. So it's not, yeah, another reason it's not replacing, because it's bigger. I don't, I want, I would, I'm thinking, I don't want you to do the building permit. We've got to, we've got to have them get this silos covered that was supposed to be taken care of um i'm uh, i can bring this back to you next month i can bring up the old uh state plan approval uh, to find out what, what conditions were part that of that would be good right roxanne yes yeah. yes okay we're not gonna we're not gonna act on this this month they have to come back so I guess no motion, Tom, would be the way to move forward. And I'll, I'll do some research and pull up the old staff report. Yes. Okay. We don't have enough information to make the motion. Yeah. And kind of, I'm sorry. I know, Tom, Ron, you've gotten stuck in the middle of this. On. Yeah. But yeah. It would have been nice to work it out. I'm looking yeah. at Monary Hart of Fork. <laughs> County community. We're getting I'm not, there. I'm not feeling the heart We're getting right there. now. Feeling just the opposite. I think we just have to kind of hold their feet to the fire a little bit because I don't want them to start going willy nilly and start. Oh yeah, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about this. I want them to understand that, you know, there are certain procedures and steps that they have to take. And I know you're explaining them to them, but it's we want it to sink in a little bit more. Um, one one question, um, as I was thinking about this site. It's unique in the fact that it did have a residence. Whether or not um, someone, uh, other than me, because I'm not sure it would be accepted, but whether or not, because it's of its uniqueness, that a residence, as long as they're involved in uh, night watchmen taking care of the property, whether that would be allowed to, under a new ordinance, be supported. I was I'm not talking about building a new, no, very new I know industrial, what you mean. Uh, building a house, but this is a unique piece of property um, situation. Yeah. And I'm also looking at other factors yeah. family wise. Yeah, that's there. Mm -hmm. And maybe. I think, you, um, can you look into that, John? John I was going to ask that. Do we have. Any anywhere where we have like um, uh, this is an industrial zone property. I don't. Think I, I understand that, but do we have like someone? If he's like a watchman, is there is there some way that if he's going to do that twenty four seven that they can? I'm just asking. I think I, I, you'd I don't have know to, the answer to that. You have to have an ordinance. Yeah, for that I would think. Yeah, 
I don't I don't think under our present ordinances. I think we covered that a while ago. But uh, I think and, our and the intent was to be vacant. But right. Yeah. I'm also so right. I don't want to be the person kicking someone on the street, so I, and I get what you're asking. I know they're trying. For. It's just a question of we don't do affordable housing in the town yeah. of Mount Airy. Well, so, we actually do need affordable housing in Mount Airy, and it's for people who already live here for the most part, not bringing in new people. It's people who are already paying 40 to 50% of so the income. So I, I just <laughs> raise it as whether or not that would be something that because of a special only one off on this lot. But I think one of the I think you're right John. I think one of the conditions we had was that they had to vacate the property. That's correct. Um and they're trying to. It's right. Just... But I think that w we need to kind of look into this a little bit and see if there's some way we can help to facilitate how they're doing that. I agree with Leslie on that. So, Tom, I, I guess I don't know what we have to do to undo to try to do. We'd have to have an ordinance. Special exception? So are we making an ordinance for a specific property? Is that what you're saying? It's tough. I think this is a very unique situation. We can. And I think that we have to. I, I, is a special exception? It's a special. Is there, can we do a special exception on it? Maybe we can. Uh, there, there's a text amendment procedure as well. Okay. And maybe we can that could be applied for. Look into it over the, the next month and see if we can have an answer for just, it. Yeah. Instead okay. of discussing it at the table. Yeah, no, I just <laughs> wanted to raise awareness. Yeah. Of it. I was thinking the same thing when you said yeah. and I can understand that they're probably having a hard time. Yeah. yeah. They were giving it to them at a reduced rent. And I can understand that they're having a hard time trying to find something. Yeah. We are sympathetic to that. We just got to find a way to make it work right. Exactly. And legally. <laughs> no, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. So, Madam Chair, uh, the next item is the 2023 Master Plan Revised Chapter uh, for Final Review. This is Chapter 1 of, all the, of the 2023-2033 Comprehensive Master Plan. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I uh, just wanted to uh, get your feedback on this. I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at any of it. Uh, let's first just go to, well, I first want to see what your thoughts are with the orientation. I, I don't like it. You don't like <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry. You don't, I don't like, like this. Yeah. No. That's one day. Anybody else have any opinions? When you say orientation, are you talking about the lengthwise or the flipping up of it? Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, it's just the, the fact it's landscape, landscape instead of this way. Profile. I don't like it. Yeah. I just like the. I'm opposite. I like the landscape a little, little bit better, particularly for maps and stuff. But that it's a bit more progressive than say. And again, it does help with. Yeah. It, as I was trying to say, it does help with. With mapping, where we don't have to have 11 by 17 inside of our master plan, which becomes very costly uh, for duplication. Um, but just wanted to sort are of get you saying, your... John, sorry. So are you saying the whole the whole plan would be like that instead of yes. like that? Not, yes. Not, not flip yeah. up, but landscape like a normal book. Oh, oh I see. It would flip up, so it would be, you know, something So it like would this. flip up. It yeah. would flip, it would oh, flip up. Never mind. Yeah, that's the, that's what it's called. Like, that's profile. Right. So it would be, I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm fine either way. The, the yeah. thing I noticed was... I believe it's essentially verbatim from chapter one of the 2000. No, the, a, a lot of it is, yes, but there is a lot that's changed also. If you go through the back. Uh, we, there's know. not a lot that's changed. <laughs> well, Bill, did you want me to rewrite the whole master plan? Because I'm one person. No, 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 no. no I don't know what you're expecting. First chapter. I'm talking about chapter one. If Bill, there's no reason to get angry with me. I'm just saying this is the previous, excuse me? Go ahead. So anyway, there are updates to this. I didn't rewrite the whole chapter because a lot of this information is still pertinent. I, exactly. That, that was my point. I was impressed that 
to the greatest extent it was still pertinent. It's still the essential context. You have things here that are, sorry. <laughs> What's that again? <laughs> um, your highlighted sections here. Yeah, so that is um, about the Senate Bill 236. I wasn't sure, um, again, it, it, it's still pertinent, but I'm not sure if it's, if it's really necess necessary in this master plan. Um, and again, even looking at the, uh, the website that's currently mm -hmm. on page 13, uh, if you go to try to look at this website, it's not even up anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not even an active website. So I'm not sure uh, what benefit that would be to, I mean, we could easily just mm -hmm. go, you know, we haven't enacted tiers and so we're, you know, we're in a, a non-tier county, basically. Um, and again, it, it's less pertinent for a municipality than it is in a in a county setting so i'm not sure if it's really necessary that's why i highlighted it to possibly okay. talk about removing that uh, highlighted yellow section do you just want to delete it because we really don't have septics here in town right it doesn't really apply to us but again if you feel like it's necessary and you want to keep it in there that that's fine with me as well so is has this been codified in the code or is it still just the act sb236 no it's been passed from 2012. yeah it's have a citation in the code it's all of this is part of the, the, the section state enabling legislation yeah and so essentially they're stepping through each of these pieces right so that's the context. I mean, it starts with the land use article, then the 1991 Forest Conservation Act. It steps through. Yeah, I was just wondering if this was codified in, in <coughs> Maryland Code. That's all. Or whether what, it's the, the page 13? Page 12. Page 12 is the beginning of it. Yeah. Yeah. The Sustainable Growth and Agricultural Preservation Act of 2012, Senate Bill 236. Usually things then end up being codified in the code. Yeah. I was just wondering if it had been or if it's still just being referred to as Senate Bill 236. Yeah. That was my question. Okay. Yeah, it's still it's still referred it's to Senate Bill 236. Okay. But my question is, I'm not sure again and to Bill's point, maybe it should stay in there and and and, and I will try to figure out it. I, I went searching for the tier maps and I could not find it uh, inside the uh, yeah, I didn't have a chance to look at it to see if I thought it should stay. So I, I Sorry? wouldn't want to take it out yet until we see if it's it, relevant. Perhaps it, one option is to simplify it and not go into quite so much detail. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, generally speaking, that, that last sentence of the first paragraph, the purpose of the legislation is to decrease future nutrient pollution. Chesapeake Bay and other water resources to reduce the amount of forest and agricultural land developed by large lot developments. It does this by limiting major resident. Well, maybe we can simply slim some of the sections down, not necessarily go into as much detail. Has anybody has anybody um, read this enough to uh, comment on any corrections or suggestions that they have in changing well, this? Or do you, you know, want if, if you look at this paragraph too? So so um, John was saying so we have not we have not adopted a tier, mm -hmm. and it says without an adopted tier map, a local jurisdiction may not authorize a major residential subdivision served by on-site septic systems, community systems, or shared systems. So that's us, right? If we haven't adopted a tier, mm -hmm. then we do need to keep that. I mean, we don't do that because when, you know, we put people on water and sewer when they, you know, these new developments, but that should probably be in here because that would apply to us if we, <coughs> if we have not adopted one of these tiers. Yeah, it says the option to adopt a growth tier um, it, maybe we could comment on that, that we've not exercised that option. Yeah. 
I think you need to keep in the part about the... Um... Well, the other thing is that when this was, when this was enacted, we were completing the, the last master plan. So we weren't really, we didn't even know any of this stuff which is why we didn't have to look at it and, you know, <laughs> scrutinize yeah. it. But now the question is, do, should we, should we, should Mount Airy be looking at whether we should be adopting a tier? Well, so well, Barney just let me know, we are actually are in tier two, basically. Oh, so, so we are in a tier. Our areas of plan to be served with sewer, sewer systems. That's right. So, so currently we're in tier two. Yeah. And that so might be what two. we just say, um, instead of having all this additional information, really, mm -hmm. which is, worthless in my opinion <laughs> related to the town yeah i mean this is yeah. this is the town plan not a county plan well right. you could say that we are in tier two i yeah and i think if you look at the last paragraph on page 13 it says that the town determined the completion of the 2013 master plan update was necessary prior to considering the formal adoption of the tier map so then you can go on and say that we did initiate discussions with the county and state planning to implement um, the regulations and have completed those discussions and are in the tier two and explain what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. I think we keep a paragraph explaining what it is, like on page 12, and then say Mount Airy has adopted tier two or whatever. Yeah, adopted growth tier two. I don't think we formally adopted it, I don't think. It's just that we are in tier two. Oh. <laughs> I mean, basically the whole town is planned sewer area. Right, yeah, so, so it's by default. I'm saying, like right. John's saying, I don't think it's officially adopted, which is something maybe you wanna propose an upcoming. Yeah, we could propose that. But you know, the okay. thing is, it's, it's actually consistent with what it says about if you don't adopt a tier map, you can't have septic, you know. So you basically have to be what we are. So it kind of fits well, together either way. Right, and okay. Carroll, Carroll County is the one that has an adopted tier map. The town itself hasn't either, but yet we're still in tier two. Yeah, we're in tier default. two, but the county's not. <laughs> and of course, Probably still, by... still rebelling, I think. Well, once again? Might, might still be rebelling. I'm not sure. Kevin kept up. <laughs> well, it, it may also be possible to boil down the, the next section, the Plan Maryland initiative. What page, Bill? Um, I think it's 14. 14. Um, because, again, the, uh, the timing of when, when we were finishing up the 2013 master plan because this gets into analysis of surrounding county growth policies and so forth and um, there may be a way to condense all this I honestly have not taken had the time to delve down into this. So I just, I wanted to get it out so that we could start looking at it. I'd like to be able to make a decision at the next meeting about this chapter. Yeah, that sounds good. I agree with that. Yeah, so I guess like you're saying, let's let's everybody sort of look at it uh -huh. and, and, and bring back any comments that we can go through. Down. Yes. And again, do you want me to bring then also the, the chapter two as a draft? <laughs> No. To you no. at the next meeting or no? No, let's get through this one. Uh, okay. No, let's read you this can, one. You can give it to us at the next meeting. For yeah, the, give it for to the us. Following that's meeting. what I'm saying. Yeah, I'll yes. just give it to you as, a, yeah. as the next item for prepare. reading. And yes, that's that fine. Yes. <laughs> okay. John, I'd, I'd also like for us to prepare to reach out to the commissions and boards, just like we did in 2013. Yep. And enlist them in some preliminary drafts of, of goals, objectives, initiatives for their particular areas and so forth. That, uh, that coordination, that teamwork was very, very valuable. To the well, again, hopefully having the Joint Commission uh, meeting that hopefully I was hoping to be able to, had submitted copies of 
their chapters and, and, and all the chapters ultimately as a draft. And, and I need to verify exactly when we have to have a public meeting too for the public to actually view the whole document. But again, I'd like to get our drafts in order prior to taking it to, um, to the citizens so that they can have a copy that they can then regurgitate it and, and modify or suggest uh, modifications to that. Okay. Thank you for bringing this. I appreciate it. So the next item of business, when I find it, oh, um, are the reports and the other future items. Carl, do you have a report? Yes, for us? yes, Councilwoman. It'll be a quick, very quick report. Town Council meeting was held on June 6. A public meeting was held on the Charter Amendment 2021-2, which re was related to charter changes for finance budgeting and purchasing at 710. The regular meeting began at 730. Uh, during the meeting, uh, Mayor Hushauer awarded several certificates to local elementary school children that were p participants in the MML If I Were a Mayor contest. And I believe Mount Airy had, I want to say, five contestants or semifinalists in this thing this year. So it was very good. It was represented on both sides of the county. So I'm very happy with that. Um, we took a vote on the regular annexation, uh, Resolution 2021-44. The annexation was voted down uh, four to one, with one, F, with one being abstain an abstention, which was me. Um, the council rescheduled the September council meeting to September 12th due to the first Monday in September being Labor, Labor Day. Uh, we passed various housekeeping ordinance, ordinances related to the budget. They were approved. These ordinances were just the annual uh, ordinances that to allow us to have a balanced budget for the year. Uh, the town council sent to planning uh, the 2022-21 20, and 2022-22 20, that related to community commercial and, and, and neighborhood professional classifications in the zoning code for it to be discussed at a later date. Uh, the next council meeting is July 11th. This is later than usual since the first Monday is July 4th and at this time I believe the start time for that is 7.30. That concludes my report. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have the zoning administrator's report here for April. Um, there will be an annexation resolution coming up for a parcel, an uh, eight acre parcel on the east side of Buffalo Road. You have the two ordinances here that were sent back to us. Um, which we need to work on. Um, I'm not quite sure what they want us to do because we, we sent them back there because we felt that they were good the way they were and we wanted them to look at them and vote on that way. Obviously, they're not going to do that, so um, well, there'll be some explanation by myself at the next council meeting and our next planning commission meeting date is July 25th 2023 22 we do not have any workshops or um, joint workshops or public hearings coming up at that meeting and when Beck brings us an updated another updated um, rework of the plan it will go out for at least two weeks for everybody to look at before we schedule. Oh, that's good. Can I can I um, make a comment on yes. two of the things you said? One is the um, CC neighborhood professional ordinances. So I know. So do are we having a workshop? I know not in July or what are what are we doing? What are you? <laughs> <coughs> well, I, with, I mean, that's, why, council, I to, that's why I wanted that's why I wanted the council to stay. I want to hear what they. I don't know why, and Carl, you can't give us any information. I want to know why they, 
what they want to see in these ordinances. I know that, that Jason said he doesn't want to see where we have to make a whole line of properties like NP. Well, he was saying, if I, it was, it was not completely clear, but I right. took notes, I was watching. And okay. I, I think what he was saying is, this one becomes NP, this one becomes NP, this, and he doesn't want that. I don't know for certain, and I, I meant to email and ask him, but I, I didn't. So I don't know if that's what he meant or not. But then, then um, Congress person to motor, you know, didn't want any ordinances, with any zoning ordinances. So, you know, my point was, it's like if you don't like these, and you right want to yourself. revamp the whole thing, or you, yeah, or you want to revamp the whole thing, then we're going to have to meet, you know, because yes, they they have a you know, they have a purpose where you're kind of, you know, you have more intensive zoning and then you're kind of moving down the line. And if you don't like that, then let's, you know, have a discussion because they're the ones who have to pass the ordinance. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. As um, Chairperson Roxanne said, I reached out. Jason said something. Councilman Demota said something. Haven't heard from the other ones, so I can't really give logic or reason. I mean, they said they want to meet and discuss, or no? I not even heard that. Jason, oh, Jason you... gave his reasons at the last council and went from there. I mean, that they want to meet, or that they don't want to meet, or that they don't want to vote, or what? What? I'm yeah. not sure what you're saying. I'll try and work on it some more and see what. Carl, the answer. Did, did you did you share with them the context of? what's going on on, on South Main and, and so forth, the fact that in terms of limited commercial and, and neighborhood professional and so forth, there, those areas are in transition. Yeah. And you've got people who live adjacent to each other in, in many, many cases that were asking for the same thing. Yeah. In part because they knew that as we're starting our master plan update process, you know, we we were going to ask again, you know, simply to try to get all request, rezoning requests in at the same time. Yeah. And as those started to come in, it made sense to, well, let's <coughs> clarify how we want to deal with these because it may make sense to sort of demarcate, yeah. you know, how much of the area that we want to change yeah. and, or not change. Yeah, I'll pass that's, that up. That's the essential context. I mean, as it, as it currently stands, even though it's not official, but the way that the vote was from the Planning Commission on that South Main Street is totally inconsistent with the code, as the code is currently written. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I'm just saying. So, okay. so at the end, you know, the council won't, be, I mean, probably would not be able to approve that or else they'd be violating their own code, just as this these folks did. I didn't vote that way, but... Um, so, you know, something has to be done, and I don't think we're going to be finishing the master plan until it's dealt with because it wouldn't make that's sense. That's correct, yeah. and that's the issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hope that they're watching, they understand the issue better, or we can say watch it. You've all, towards the end of the meeting, you've explained pretty much why they were sent back and go from there. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks, Carl. Thanks. Do I hear a motion? I move motion. to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. We adjourn the meeting. All those uh, in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you.